Trevor, I guess as a, as a coach and a competitor, I mean, how excited were you for this challenge, right? I mean, the, the, the riddle that's never been solved, the guy that nobody's been able to figure out. How fun is that for you to get in and say, we're going to craft a game plan to do this? I mean, that's the ultimate. Uh, it gets me up, and uh, those are the type of challenges I want for my athletes, you know, at the right time. And, uh, yeah, this is, this is this is my purpose as a coach and as a person is to externalize the internal champion. And uh, I feel that's what I do very well. So I'm very excited for that. When you're, when you're making a game plan for a guy like Habib, you know, like uh, you've seen a lot of tape on him, right? I mean, I think people can figure out this is, I think, what it takes. But then how do you take that game plan to craft him? I mean, you ever go, okay, I think this is what it would take to beat him, but I'm not sure my guy can execute that. I know he can do this instead. You know what I'm saying? Like, how much do you tailor a game plan against the opponent based on what your guy can do? Uh, well, first off, I tailor my game plans throughout a career for a championship fight. You know, we work on fundamentals from the beginning. And one thing that I think uh, we were able to do very well was keep our most important weapon hidden. And with Justin Gaethje, he's a extremely good wrestler, and he's got a very unique style in wrestling. And uh, he hasn't had to use it. Again, it's very hard to go on game plan against someone's wrestling uh, when they haven't showed it. And I always call wrestling the get out of jail card uh, in the fight sport because wrestling, I believe, is the most dominant position controlling piece you can have. So I feel good about that. But. Khabib is the best at what he does, so it's not like I'm going, hey, we're going to go in there and just out-wrestle him. It's just, again, that's just a, a, a little bonus of what we have. And, uh, again, it's just an opportunity to go out there and face the best, and I do believe Khabib, I believe he's the best pound for pound, and I've thought that for a long period of time. I mean, there's other fighters that put on exciting fights, and you can consider them best pound for pounds and, and who they faced and things like that, but he's just the... the it's patterns. It's who's the most consistent. And when it comes to being consistent, that's, that's the key to being great. It's consistency. And he's, he, Khabib is that. So in the build-up to this fight, like Justin's been pretty open. And I don't think it's a mystery. And I'm sure you guys have you know, levels and, 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 and multiple options. But he's like, I got to stay off the fence if I'm in the center, I'm in a bad spot. Man, I think that's probably fairly common knowledge. But does it bother you at all or worry you at all? Like, oh, Justin, don't, don't talk about any of that. Like, don't say anything in the public. No, not at all. I, I, I mean, this is they're, – they're, they're both so high level. They know what each other are going to do. You know, hiding a game plan. I, don't, I, I think coming up with game plans, that's – yes, that's a great thing you need to do. And we definitely come up with game plans. But in life, you come up with plans. But your plan never stays – exactly how you put it you have to have a target you have to have a destination and you have to be able to adjust to your plan if you take a trip and you hit a detour a lot of people go, oh man my whole oh, plan b plan b and that to me is the worst thing you can say to someone in the corner is oh man we got to switch our game plan i mean instantly you're you're clearly showing a big old sign to your athlete we are losing you know and for me it's the adjustments that we need to make and i plant seeds i don't put a lot of uh our opponents' names into my athletes' uh, uh, minds because we're visual. And if I say Khabib over and over and over, he's sleeping with Khabib through training. Every night he goes to sleep, he's got that visual of Khabib. Again, we focus on winning rounds. And, uh, I mean, that's what Justin does. Justin's a, a performer. We, one thing I do know, he's going to go out and perform. And uh, that's all I ask. I... I I don't go into these fights so determined to win. A lot, a lot of people always talk about, hey, man, you got to win, you got to win. And to me, you can lose rounds and still win the fight. And you can lose fights and still win championships. So it's about how do you adjust? How do you, how do you learn from things? People are like, well, you know, Khabib, what if he takes you down? I said, that's one of the best things that can happen to us in a fight because we'll, we'll see things. You, you don't know how he takes you down until he takes you down. So... What we're going to do is, is, is go out there and not hesitate. So last thing for me, I would say, especially given what you're just talking about, given the respect you have for Habib, what's the biggest key? Is it, is it physical tactics or is it mental focus? Because I feel like when you watch Habib fights, you see moments where guys break. You see it on their face and they go, man, this dude's a little bit different. So is it physical tactics and strategy or is it mental focus during the 25 minutes? 
it's 100% mental, this fight. These guys are at the highest level. It's who, who can go out there and, and, and do what they do. You have to be in control yourself to win championships, and Khabib has been the best at that. He has controlled himself throughout fights. He's had conversations with guys when he fights them. And to me, he's in control. What we got to do is take him out of control, and we're not going to sit there and force him to go out of control. We need to be in control of ourselves and not break. Khabib breaks people. And Justin Gaethje is one of those guys that, you know, he says – the most craziest things I've coached for a long period of time, and I've never had athletes say things in the way he says them. It's just like it's real. He really loves to fight. He really says, hey, man, if I die, I want to die in here. Like, that's crazy to me. And just to be real with that is honesty and truth to yourself and your self-image is, is key in life. And uh, I know he's going to perform, and I know I'll be proud. And, again, the outcome, I don't look into that. I look at going out there and making sure I'm on point. I, it's, it's as important he needs to perform as it is for me to perform. You know, I am not here to go out there and hope he does well. I'm focused on me performing, and uh, that's all I can control. And I trust that he's going to perform just because of his patterns. Trevor. It would seem in a Khabib fight the worst case scenario would be get to sort of round three and he's been dominant for 10 minutes and he's had you against the fence on the floor for 10 minutes. Do you have an idea in mind? I know you said you don't want to go, oh, we need to switch to game plan B. But do you have an idea in mind what you can say or what you can tactically change to stop the fight getting that momentum for Khabib? Yeah, there's so many different scenarios that go through my head with this and uh, different things that I've experienced in my career and things that I've failed at in my career that I've learned from. and. It all comes down to the situation and, and the adjustments that we'll need to make. And I don't know if that's a, you know, to be a coach and, and not just a teacher, but a coach, I have to know my athlete and I got to know how to piss them off. I got to know how to wake them up. I got to know how to cool them down and slow them down and, and, and bring them back. Uh, that, uh, that's where I have to perform. And I don't know in the scenario, I've, I've seen it over and over in my head what Khabib does, he goes out there and breaks people. And again, it, it, I don't know what conversation, what story I'll have to bring up uh, if we get in that situation, but I'm ready for that. And, uh, and I do believe uh, Justin is the most co coachable athlete in sports. Like, the guy is unreal how he listens and how he can turn a friendship off and listen to anything I tell him to do. Sometimes I mess around with him, and I always talk about being coachable. I have a story, a, a funny story. When Shane used to work out, he'd work out, Shane Carwin, he'd work out with uh, all our classmates at the gym, and he was the only athlete that did that, and he was fighting on a on large scale. And I have a hula hoop drill where it's hip, hip control, and I call it hula hoop just to kind of, you know, bring their ego back a little bit, mess with them, you know, like the little dog barking. And I brought in a pink hula hoop and uh, had Shade put it on, and Shade was so coachable. And uh, Justin, if I told him to put a hula hoop on, he would put it on and swing it around and have no care. He's so freaking coachable. By far the most coachable person I've worked with on the sense of I almost wish he would ask more questions. He just, he just, he has 100% trust in me. Habib's fights all tend to look the same way. Mm -hmm. um, but is there one you can point at and say, from a tactical point, I've gained the most out of watching this fight? If it be Poye, Connor, T Bao, is there one in his catalog that you've looked at and thought, okay, I've seen something in this I can take away? Which fight would that be? Yeah, I mean, they're. they're there, there's so many different ones. Al Quinta taking a fight on uh, when he had four fights. I was on that card with Rose and and Joanna. Uh, there's four fights that fell through that week, and I remember them chase, changing all the posters. And I felt so bad for the UFC crew just adjusting these posters. I'm like, gosh, there's so much work that goes into this. And he was adjusting, you know, game plans in his head. I'm guessing and going, oh my God, this guy, this guy, this guy, and. Uh, he went out and wrestled, and, and, and Khabib made an adjustment and went to a jab and started looking, you know, I'm going to say Muhammad Ali just because it didn't look like Muhammad Ali, but from Khabib going from wrestling to that, I was like, damn, he went to Muhammad Ali. He was on his feet. He was backing up and throwing jabs. So, I mean, there's so many different patterns in what he does so well. He's very good at adjusting, and uh, 
he's he's greatness. He's uh, he's a guy who is going to be the toughest to break, to, uh, toughest to make adjustments to, and uh, and with the little adjustments he's made, he's been consistent. So I've seen all sorts. I've seen him get rocked. I've seen him get rocked and 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 stay so composed while he's rocked. He he knows how to move his feet when he's rocked and pull you in and, and get you to pressure him so he, he can close the gap easy. I mean, there's so many different things. Uh, uh, I mean, there's, there's so many different fights. I see a little bit different in each fight he fights. The last thing for me, a lot of the conversation about this fight has been, will Justin break? Will Justin break? And I feel like no, no one's ever sort of been able to test Khabib's mm -hmm. mentality. If Khabib can't take you down, is there a possibility he breaks? If mm -hmm. he gets rocked and he's unable to get it to the ground, is there a chance that he starts to break? Yep. I, I believe anybody in the world is breakable. And again, it's uh, it's 90% of the time not. I mean, the, the, the athlete you're facing is, is a big part of breaking you, but your biggest opponent is yourself and the conversation that's going on in your head. And when you lose fights, most of the time you lose to yourself. And, and when you can look at an athlete and athletes that are truthful with theirself, they can be like, ah, oh, I, I could have did this, I could have did that. But you know the flags in your head where you're like, ah, oh, you start to pull back, you start to hesitate, you start to think when's the round over. Those type of thoughts where you're thinking, you know, past or future. You're not present. And, uh, you know, again, anybody's breakable. Trevor, uh, we've spoken with Justin over the years, and there were points where he would say, I care more about fighting Habib than for the belt, because I would assume he was in agreement that he believes he'd be the best fighter in the world. So how far back can you remember of Justin like kind of targeting this Khabib before you even got the, the mm -hmm. Uh for a while. Like he did a little weight cut with him and uh Justin was in the World Series. And after he helped him out, he's like, I wanna fight fight that guy. Not out of disrespect, but he's like he's that freaking good. And uh Justin loves the step up competition. He likes to get scared. He's a uh, he's a guy that I always have to pull back when we go out and do things because he just loves fear. He loves things that scare him. It just gets him up. And uh, I mean, he's a uh, he's one of those guys that uh, I think he's been looking at Khabib for a long period of time. He wants to fight the best all the time. And how would you compare the build up, I guess, in preparation, not outside the pandemic, to when Rose fought Yolanda? Yolanda was undefeated. Mm -hmm. she thought she, everyone thought she was the greatest female fighter of all time. How would you compare the two? Uh, the builds for these two fights? I, th I think very similar outside of the, the trash talk. You know, I think it'd be easier if Khabib trash talked. I really do, uh, depending on who, who it is, but uh, that makes you want to get up and fight more. I mean, when you, I think the best athletes out there don't show anything, you know, where they're not going to give you signs, you know. Uh, I think Khabib's smart enough to go, hey, is Justin talking about his game plan because he's going to change it up on me? It's, uh, it's again, this is chess. And, uh, Am I being played is what's going on through these athletes' head. I think that's the cool part about these high-level fights. Uh, was Rose scared in the Yolanda fight going in there when she was being bullied and, and, and being talked down and, and, and having that, that aggressiveness of Yolanda? Oh, yeah, she was scared. But one thing is is a, a fear will produce tunnel vision. Uh, George St. Pierre used to be like, never again, never again, I never signed a contract. He feared fighting, but he would he would run to the cage. I mean, that's something special. So, I mean, fear is one of those things that turns you on and gets you fired up. That's why a lot of people fight differently than they spar because there's that true fear. There's realness to it. And uh, you know, Justin, you know, says he's willing to die in there, and I, I think he's truthful with himself. That saying, hey, if I didn't have a coach that would be willing to stop the fight, he would go and tell. And he had said something that was super funny. He said. I don't think someone would kill me. He goes, I think I killed myself. I pushed my heart rate to that point, and I just <laughs> laughed at that. It's just super unique. But, yes, those two fights are, are similar in that sense, but so much different. Uh, Habib himself has said, like, obviously wrestling is his thing, but do you, how much do you pay attention to his striking considering? His striking is wonderful. A lot of people don't understand his striking. And uh, do when he was talking about a Mayweather fight, does, that go, does he go out there and outbox Mayweather? No, I think Connor does better in a boxing match than Khabib. But when you add wrestling to it, his striking's great. His his feints and his level changes and his his off beat and things is super unique. So uh I think his his striking is you you have to have it all at this level. Uh he's definitely great in one area. 
but I think he's really, really, really good in every other area. Coach, are you the kind to give an inspiration, uh, inspirational speech before Justin goes out there? I go off feeling, 100%. It's always present. I don't plan that. I, I go through scenarios in my head where you know I have to challenge myself, and I'm just going through experiences where I failed. Uh, and go, man, I've got to be prepared for that. You know, uh, instances of forgetting mouthpieces in corners and just stupid stuff. I failed so much as a coach. I go off the energy in the room and what I'm feeling, and I feel like if I'm present, again, game plans are, are see, I, I call them seeds that are planted. I've got to plant seeds, and I've got to be able to connect to that seed uh, at the time when it's needed. And... Uh, I don't go in there saying, I'm going to have this talk and I'm going to bring up this story. Not at all. I have to go off the whim and I've got to be able to make an adjustment in the moment. But that's that's just an obsession of scenarios and experience, I would say. Saturday morning when you meet up with Justin, what's the schedule going to be like? How do you, I guess, what's the fight day process for something like this to make sure he is in the zone when he makes that walk? I would say a whole bunch of dumb dad jokes. I, I carry a weird a weird environment. I, I try to make it fun, and uh, my goal is to keep him not focused on the fight until we're in there, uh, uh, especially when it's last three days of fight, fight week because that's where their pupils start to open. They start to get really turned on, and uh, I've got to keep, I'll pull that back and keep that catered. So I do a lot of stupid jokes, and, and I call it the, the light, and men in black, you know, when they zap them and it's like, what just happened? And anytime I see them start to overthink something, it's like I got to bring them back and I dumbify them. Maybe you could say it that way where I make them go, what was I just freaking thinking, you know? We've got a minute. What's your go-to dad joke? I mean, oh, let's think of one real quick. Uh, why is uh, everybody in, uh, oh, what would I say? Uh, I got I to pull one that I made up. So, so if you're if you're in Europe and you're sitting on a bench, and I'm making this one off off the whim. If you're in Europe and you're sitting on a bench, what are you? I don't know. European sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> that's dumb. See, that's off the whim. You got to come up with stuff that I see. Like three of you shake their head. And, uh, <laughs> there was, uh, Nate Barcourt was the best. He he's quitting his eyes to go. <laughs> He felt bad for me. Thanks, I don't claim to be funny at all, not at all. I make people dumber. Trevor, just lastly, yes. um, can you talk to me a little bit about the redesign or your redesign of the mixed martial arts glove? Yep. What makes it so different to the UFC glove, for example? Uh, so the UFC glove is, is a great glove. It's the first glove that really came out that's the same pattern. It's the Wano glove outside of the skirt is gone. Uh, the skirt was a, a piece on the inside that uh, Shane Carwin and we actually had to cut into in Las Vegas when we were fighting Gonzaga. Uh, they had a 4X glove and we had to cut into it and I was just blown away that the commission allowed us to use scissors to get his hand in the glove and then Don House ended up creating another strap but to me I call it a gardening glove it's 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 got you know finger holes that your hand goes through and it causes your hand to be in this position I mean it's it's it, it works it's been functional for a long period of time but this sport has evolved so much and I'm always rethinking things and being injured as a coach is why I started what I'm doing, and uh, I've seen all the issues uh, with finger pokes and, and mainly hands being hurt. And when you can't make a true fist, uh, it's how you hurt your hands. And I look at performance like people pay money to watch fights. And when you're paying big money to watch a fight, it's about, hey, if I pay $60 for a pay-per-view and someone breaks their hand and doesn't know it, that pulls the performance back. If my hands are worn down from gripping and squeezing, I always say when you watch a guy's fight, it's either their hands are here or they're squeezed all the way and they're white knuckled. Uh, uh, I produce a glove that's more in a, 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 a position like this. If you look at like boxing hand wraps, they force your hand in this position where even if I hit here, I'm, my strong bones are lined up instead of in a position here where I'm hitting with my door donkey knuckles. And uh, the, the straps are internal. And I talked to the UFC for two years, and they were interested. Dana was really, really interested. But coming into a deal, I don't want to – I want to be with the UFC first, mainly Dana first, because I think he's the creator of MMA and brought MMA into what it was. So it's a respect for Dana. Uh, and I'd like to get a deal done with Dana, but 
it's the strapping system and technology goes through with all my equipment. I'm not ready to give up my, my company. Uh, and uh, I want to help all mixed martial arts, but I would love to, to start with Dana. And uh, I think we'll get to some. I actually have a couple prototypes that I redesigned a new technology that's outside of my technology. So uh, hopefully I'll get some time with him and I know he's busy. But my focus right now is, is Justin Gaethje. And my goal is to help every athlete out there that goes out there and inspires the world. I mean, fighting right now is, is I think, helping so many people deal with COVID and, and, and what's going on. And life is a fight. And once you fight, you realize that when you stop fighting, it's still a fight for all of us. So we're all fighters and fighters inspire us. So I want to help all fighters and hopefully I can help not stop finger pokes, maybe help a little bit.